Ford just unveiled their universal electric vehicle platform and production system. And you know, my first take of this is that Ford is copying Tesla and Elon has himself to blame. No, no, skip the intro. Let's just talk. This video is going to be about Ford, but to be fair, we have to talk about Tesla because there are many similarities between what we learned from Ford today and what Tesla told us like two years ago. At Investor Day 2023, the VP of Engineering, Lars Moravi, and Chief Designer, Franz von Holzhausen, bragged about what Tesla had already accomplished and what they had up their sleeves next, what they called their unboxed process. Today we learn what Ford has secretly been working on, and my reaction is... They did that on The Simpsons! Ha! Uh, no, 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 Butters. Tesla did it. Or at least they said they were going to do it. So what did we learn about this vehicle? We already knew some of it, but now it's confirmed. A midsize pickup truck will be assembled at Louisville Assembly Plant, and other body styles would come later. The footprint of this truck will be closer in size to the Maverick than the Ranger, so the length and the width. Production will come in 2027 calendar year. It will use prismatic LFP batteries made in America. Uh oh, Tesla did it. Tesla did it. Actually, no butters. Tesla will be making LFP batteries using a cattle design in Nevada, but they are for their Megapack energy storage, not for vehicles. Ford will start up their Marshall, Michigan plant in 2026, also using a cattle design, but they are for use in electric vehicles. Ford will also offer their NMC chemistry batteries from SK On. Those are being built soon at a plant that's about an hour south of Louisville. According to the reports, it will be a 400 volt electrical architecture, which yeah, that's going to disappoint some people, but keeping it to a 400 volt system makes it affordable. And we see that with other automakers. Jumping to an 800 volt system is great, but it does come with added cost and complexity. We did not see a prototype. They said there wouldn't be one, but some employees did and their reactions were overwhelmingly positive, but you know, what else are you gonna expect? During the presentation, they showed a worker wax on the front of a vehicle with no air intake. I think this is their peak at the front of the vehicle, which, you know, oddly looks like the AI image that I barfed up earlier. Pretty interesting. Acceleration would be about as fast as a Mustang EcoBoost, so that's like zero to 60 and four and a half seconds. Interior passenger space would be as good as a RAV4. Storage would be in the rear bed plus a front trunk. It will charge quickly, but no details were given. And it will feature Ford's Pro Power outlets and also be capable of vehicle to home energy transfer. It will offer all the latest connectivity through its zonal architecture, including Blue Cruise driver assistance. All this sounds great, but thankfully there were no pre orders being accepted for a vehicle that we didn't get to see. But the punchline comes with a starting price of only $30,000. Elon had promised a $25,000 Tesla for years, but you know, depending on who you believe, that got axed in favor of pursuing robo-taxis, AI, and robotics. Their cheaper EVs just appear to be a decontented version of their current vehicles based on some spy photos in China. The standard battery for this vehicle is reportedly half the size of other Ford EVs, which you know, sounds terrible, but you know, Jim Farley has been warming us up to this idea for years now, saying that we need to get used to smaller batteries for affordable EVs. A quick look around at the future slate pickup, the old Bolt EUV, and the current BYD Dolphin, and yeah, that's standard range battery. If it charges quickly and more importantly, consistently, you can still do road trips with it. That's about all we know of the vehicle you get to drive, not too much, but they provided more details about the manufacturing process for this universal electric vehicle platform. The process is based around three modules flowing like a tree formation rather than a continuous linear assembly line. They did that on the Tesla. Ha! Well, Butters, that depends on who you believe. If you believe your eyes and instincts, Tesla has not deployed their unboxed process. But if you believe Elon, he's basically said, oh yeah, sure, we're, we're already doing that, mission accomplished. 
He also said that the future cyber cab would use that manufacturing process. All of it comes down to whether you believe his words or not. One thing for sure is that the process they showed us two years ago sounds awfully familiar to what we heard from Ford today, so let's make some comparisons. Ford said that they would have three modular assemblies on the tree, like three on the tree, I guess, and they would use structures to all come together. The front and rear modules would make extensive use of large castings. No, no! Tesla! Did it. Don't call it a giga casting, it's a unicasting, registered trademark of Ford. We've seen other automakers like Toyota shown their intentions to use large castings as well. The center module, which contains the battery, is a structural part of the vehicle. This is sometimes referred to as cell to body, where the top of the battery pack is also the floor of the interior compartment where the seats and other components get mounted to. This reduces the number of stampings and simplifies the manufacturing. They did that on the Tesla. Now would be a good time to mention that one of the key engineers they featured was Alan Clark, who, as you might guess, came from Tesla. He started at Ford a year before they unveiled their unbox process, so it's not clear how much involvement or knowledge he had of their process. Full details of what this would look like inside Louisville assembly plant were not given. You know, you can kind of visualize the assemblies being built around a giga casting with the front suspension, brakes, and electronics all fully assembled. The rear giga casting assembly would include the drive motor, electronics, and suspension all fully assembled. And then the battery middle assembly with the seats and interior components, including maybe the instrument panel, all would be fully assembled and those three modules would come together. What's less clear is how the body structure merges with that. I assume the three modules would rise up into the pre-painted body structure that's built through a traditional body plant. That would be similar to the Tesla Model Y production today. Tesla's planned unbox process implies that the body would come together different than that. But as far as we know, this is still just a proposal and none of that has entered production for Tesla. Ford cited some very impressive figures and accomplishments with this new process. They said that two thirds of the welds are gone, 20% fewer parts versus a typical vehicle, and half of the fasteners are no longer needed. Plus, it would come together 40% faster with better build quality and outcomes. Traditional assembly process requires workers to crawl inside the vehicle to install the interior, the seats, and the wiring. All of that plus the instrument panel. It's literally a pain in the back and neck. Union representatives plus Ford engineers promised that the work would be much easier for this vehicle. Less twisting, turning, and reaching to make this new platform. Ford said that once production begins, it will have the highest level of automation of any Ford plant. But I find this kind of interesting that they talk so much about the human workers that are going to be involved and their well-being, which is great. I mean, I've been in assembly plants and I wouldn't want to do that work. However, they did not talk much about automation, robotics, or cobots. That's where a human works with a mechanical system to get the job done. You're seeing other automakers, certainly in China, but also Tesla and Hyundai, are promoting how their own internal research is being used to replace human workers inside the plant. We heard none of that mentioned by Ford. That could just be political messaging, you know, for the new president and, of course, for the UAW. Maybe Ford has some modest plans to use robots in the process, and we just don't know about it. Earlier this year, Ford canceled plans for its new zonal architecture, internally called FNV4, for fully networked vehicle. It was decided instead to focus its attention on their Skunk Works program and its electrical architecture. So here it is. We now know that the Ford Universal EV platform will have a zonal architecture where a very few number of smart modules replace the function of many smaller, dumb, cheap modules that automakers use today. This allows for less wiring and complexity with fewer parts. Ford said that this vehicle will have 4,000 feet less of wiring. 
than a traditional EV. So that reduces cost. It reduces weight by about 22 pounds. And the assembly complexity is vastly simplified. Who else has a zonal architecture? Uh oh, Tesla did it. Yes, yes, and many other EV startups, but you can say that Tesla led the way in this area. Quick side note, that does not look like Apple CarPlay Ultra. If it was, the center display running Apple CarPlay would look exactly like the cluster display, but they don't match. In the end, I don't see any shame in saying that Ford is following in the footsteps of Tesla. Really? So I shouldn't care if I come up with an idea. Tesla already did it. It doesn't matter. Tesla has shown how to make an affordable EV while still making money at it. And it seems to me that it's obvious Ford's universal EV platform benchmarked Tesla just as much as they say they benchmarked Chinese automakers. Over a hundred years ago, when Ford started using the moving assembly line, other automakers saw a good thing and they copied it. You know, that's not cheating. That's just being smart. And Elon is to blame for all this. That's how I started off the video. He should have just come out with the Model 2 or Q or whatever they're going to call it using their unbox process. And we would all be saying how far ahead Tesla is of the competition. But, you know, shit happened. There were lots of other messages merged into this presentation, made in America messaging for the new administration, lots of billions of dollars in investments talked about. The UAW got to say their part about jobs in America, and a Democratic governor got to get up on stage and talk too. Ford was very optimistic about this future platform and the variety of vehicles that could come off of it. However, they, they did acknowledge that success is never guaranteed. This Louisville assembly plant that has been operating in its current location since 1955, and amongst the many vehicles that have been built there, it was home to about two-thirds of all the Edsel-branded vehicles that came from Ford. Those vehicles were intended to be revolutionary styling departure for Ford, and you know how that turned out. I think we all hope that this breakthrough vehicle from Ford has a lot more success than that one did. We'll have to wait a few months to find out more.